You know, Mr. Sams, mm. there's lots of shapes in the world. Yes, mine being the best. Yours is the best shape, yeah. yes. I'm in pretty good shape myself, ah. yeah. yeah. I uh, just got a four-mile run today. And nice. It's pretty fast. I actually. did not run at all today. Yeah. I have not run since last Wednesday. Uh-oh, that's I not know. good. No. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, okay. I'm in shape, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about specific shapes of molecules. Now when you see the word molecular, we're talking about molecules. Molecules. So let's talk about molecules. Before we can talk about the shapes though, we need to sort of understand the, the overriding principle that helps us understand the shapes of molecules. Vesper. Vesper. Or Vesper. 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 I, I know I've heard it called Vesper, but it shouldn't be Vesper. I know, but they, they're trying to make it sound English. <sighs> Vesper. So it's the valence. Like those little scooters. Well, that's a Vespa. There you go. This first one I think should make sense. Valence shell electron pair. Pairs. Pairs of electrons. Of outer electrons. Yeah. And then repulsion. What repulsion means they like don't like each other. Right. If you're repelled, yeah, Mr. Sam's repelled by me. My 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 breath must be repulsive. And so um, that's because electrons have the same charge. Yeah. And, and therefore repel. They each repel other. each other. If you ever played with magnets, right? If you get the positive end and the negative end, and you take another one and you put the negative end with the positive end. It, it, they repel. Yeah. Electrons also repel because mm -hmm. like charges repel, just like as we talked about previously, opposite charges attract. Why? We don't know. Okay. So here's the general rule. Electrons want to be as far apart as is physically possible. Okay. That's the rule. Okay. So that's that's what determines the shape of a, of a molecule. Now, when you're trying to determine the shape of a molecule, there's a couple of things we need to understand. There is something called an electron cloud. Okay. A cloud of electrons. Yes. Now, now, if you talk to me, sometimes I refer to this as a thing. A thing. Because, yeah, we're going to talk about how many electron clouds are coming off of a central atom. How many things. Or how many things. Yeah. So in a thing or an electron cloud could be either. Either an unshared pair of electrons. So if I have, for example, SO2, that would be a good one. Okay, we I drew would, that in the last lesson. Yeah, and if you don't know, as Mr. Bergman knows it. Here's SO2. Okay. So on the sulfur, we have an unshared pair. That's yep. a thing. A thing. Okay, or an electron cloud. We right. have a, a single, single, a double, or a triple bond. We've got a double. That's a that's thing. That's a thing. And we have a single bond, and that's a thing. thing. So, that's so how sulfur, many things do I have? Sulfur has three, three things, things coming off of it. It has the unshared pair, it has a double bond, and it has a single, single bond. bond. So now, the things. double bond does not count as two. That's right. Double bond it's counts still just one a thing. thing. This or an one thing. electron cloud is how we could also call it's this. It's more appropriate. The right. things might make more sense. Yes. So, hey, here's the rules. You determine the number of clouds. Or things. Right? You count the connections. One, two, three. So three. In this case. That's, this case would be three. You count the number of unshared pairs. Okay. Well, actually, no. This is two. Oh, yes. Sorry. Number of unshared pairs, one. Yes. And they add up to three things. Right. And then you use the chart to determine shape. We've got and we'll a chart. talk about the chart in a minute. In a, yeah. Yep. Now, okay. to understand geometrically how this works, let's watch a little clip where I talk about um, two dimensions versus three. Two dimensions versus three dimensions. The goal in this thing called the Vesper theory is that you're trying to keep the electrons as far away from each other as possible because all electrons have the same charge. Remember, a bond, a line, is electrons. And electrons want to stay as far as possible far apart as possible. So if I were to have, say, an atom, or a molecule, pardon me, and I was trying to figure out what's the furthest apart, so let's say, oh, it's too good. If you have the central atom here, you would expect them all to be at about 90 degrees from each other here, right? 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. I would expect that if it was a two-dimensional object. But you see, it's a three-dimensional object, and voila, you can do better than that. You can actually get what's called the tetrahedral shape, where each of these angles is 109.5 degrees. 109.5. 109.5 is bigger than 90. 90. So because of three-dimensional object, we have to think in three dimensions. If you're doing it on a piece of paper, you want to make it this, this sort of uh, you know, cross-type shape. It's even hard to do. Um, but that's incorrect. When you have four substances, they want to be as far apart as is physically Okay, so understand it. You've got to work in three dimensions when we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. So, hey, this is the, we're calling this... The shape sheet. The shape sheet. or sh Shape paper. Sheet? We'll call it the sheet. Okay. This is in your packet. Yes. If it isn't, then you could print it. Yes. Okay. So, if you look at here, the number of clouds, or as Mr. Sams likes to call, these are the number things. of things. You have three choices. Two things, three things, or four things. 
There's, by the way, five and six things, but in this course, we're not going to cover the five right. and the six things. We'll save that right. for AP. That's sort of an advanced topic. Yeah. And they're very rare anyways. Most commonly are two, three, or four mm -hmm. things, or uh, electron clouds. So here is our a shaped paper. You'll want to have this a copy of this handy for you as we do some examples. So let's do some examples. So let's do several examples, Mr. Sands. All right. So the it. first one I want to do is CH4. Now, I'm going to just draw the Lewis structure because I know what they are. Okay, you guys would need to draw the Lewis structures based, based on, on the rules, on the rules in a previous podcast. So here is CH4, also called methane. Okay, and we're gonna. And if you want to see this built, it would look something like this. We yes. have a central carbon with four hydrogens coming. So out. what shape would that be? We would refer to the shape paper, and right. we ask how many things. I'm just saying, Sam's how many uh, electron pairs? Let's are look at carbon. I see one, two, three, four single bonds coming off of that. So that's four things. Yeah, four so clouds. four things. So if we look at the chart. And we find four things down here. Okay. Now, and, all of those are a bond. Right. So we're now, looking at a lot four of people, things. Four things, and they're all connected. In fact, CH4, it says here is one, one of the examples. Thing. And so this would be something called tetrahedral. tetrahedral. Bond angles of 109 degrees. So his shape is tetrahedral. It's not a tetrahedron, by the way. It's tetrahedral. Yes. Tetrahedron actually looks like this. We're yeah. talking about a three-dimensional shape with sides. Your molecules don't have sides. Yeah. So we're talking tetrahedral shape like this dog toy here. <laughs> okay. Our second example is going to be NF3. And again, I will draw the Lewis structure of NF3 and see if you can figure out. Again, when you do these, well, I'm going to make you draw the Lewis structures. Yep and then determine the shapes. But you can look at other podcasts yeah. to determine what that one would now, be. Now, while he's, while he's drawing that, this well, is I what it would look like three-dimensionally. the shape paper first so they can see that. Okay. So if you go there, how many things or how many electron pairs, Mr. we got Sam? four things. We've got an unbonded pair, an One unshared, unshared pair. unshared, okay. And then we have three bonds. Three so, bonds. So that's a total of four things. So that's a four thing. So we're still down here at the four things. Right. And so four things, but there's one unshared pair right here. Yep. And then this shape is pyramidal. So Mr. Right. Sam's... Let's write that pyramidal, and then you can talk about it. Yeah, pyramidal. So it, it looks like this is derived from the tetrahedral shape. We've got the three atoms on the bottom, and then we have this unbonded pair of electrons here at the top. Okay. So you can kind of see how it looks like a pyramid.